Hey Solar Squad, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, cause today we're diving deep into something a lot of you have been asking for. Remember this comment from at guysbree3520? They asked for a video on a 6 kilowatt hybrid solar system with 10 600 watt panels and an automatic transfer switch or ATS. Well, your wish is my command. Today we're breaking down every single component, every connection and every step to build your very own powerful 6 kilowatt hybrid solar system, ensuring you're always powered up come rain or shine or even a grid outage. Get ready to understand exactly what you need and how to set it all up. Let's go. Alright, let's kick things off with the heart of our system. The main components. For our 6 kilowatt hybrid setup using those awesome 600 watt panels, Here's what you'll need. 1. Solar Panels First up, our power generators. 10 monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar panels, each rated at 600 watts. Look for panels with good efficiency, ideally above 20%, and a strong temperature coefficient for better performance in heat. Ensure they have a maximum power voltage, VMP, and current IMP suitable for stringing. Irinda, hybrid Inverter Next, the brain of our system, a 6 kW hybrid solar inverter. This is crucial because it manages power from your solar panel's battery and the grid. It should have a built-in MPPT charge controller and be capable of both grid-tied and off-grid operation. Look for models with a high surge rating and good efficiency. Point DC distribution board components for the solar array. Safety first. For your DC direct current side from the panels, you'll need a robust DC distribution board or combiner box. Inside, you'll find DCSPD Surge Protective Device A DCSPD, typically rated for up to 1000 volts DC or higher, depending on your string voltage. This protects your system from lightning strikes and power surges. DCMCB Miniature Circuit Breaker Several DCMCBs sized appropriately for your solar panel strings. For our 6 kW system, you'll likely need breakers rated around 20 to 32 amps, depending on your string current, and rated for your string voltage, e.g. 500 volts or 1000 volts DC. DC Isolator Switch And a main DC isolator switch rated for 1000 volts DC or more and sufficient current, e.g. 32 amps to 63 amps. This allows you to safely shut off the DC power from your panels for maintenance. AC Distribution Board Components Specifications Now let's talk about the AC alternating current side where the power goes to your home and interacts with the grid. You'll need a well-equipped AC distribution board, often called a consumer unit, with these crucial elements. ACSPD Surge Protective Device An ACSPD rated for your mains voltage, e.g. 230 volts or 400 volts AC. Just like the DC SPD, this protects your home's electrical system from AC surges. ACMCBs, miniature circuit breakers. Multiple ACMCBs for your various load circuits within your home. These are sized based on the specific circuits, typically 10 amps, 16 amps, 20 amps, 32 amps, etc. All rated for your AC voltage. Main ACMCB for load. A main AC MCB for your total house load, typically 32 amps to 63 amps, depending on your total household consumption. This acts as the primary breaker for your inverter's AC output to your loads. Main AC isolator switch for grid supply. Crucially, a main AC isolator switch. Rated for your grid supply voltage and current, e.g. 63 amps or 100 amps, 230 volts or 400 volts AC. This allows you to completely isolate your system from the grid for safety. Recommended battery for 6 kW system and MCB for battery bank. For a hybrid system, battery storage is key, giving you power when the sun isn't shining. For a 6 kW system, especially one aiming for good autonomy, I highly recommend. Battery type and capacity. A lithium-ion phosphate, life PO4, battery bank. While lead acid is an option, life PO4 offers superior lifespan thousands of cycles, deeper discharge capabilities and higher efficiency. For a 6 kW inverter, you'll want a battery bank capable of delivering sustained power. A 48 volt battery bank with at least 100 amp hours to 200 amp hours capacity is a good starting point for moderate backup. This would translate to about 4.8 to 9.6 kWh of usable energy, 
If you need longer backup, you'll want more. And for absolute safety, a high current DC MCB or a dedicated fuse for your battery bank, typically rated for 150 amps to 250 amps or higher, depending on your inverter's maximum battery current draw. This protects your battery and inverter from overcurrent situations. ATS specifications recommended for 6 kW solar power system. Now for the star of the show for seamless power, the automatic transfer switch or ATS. For our 6 kW system, you'll need a single phase ATS rated for at least 63 amps, but ideally 100 amps if your total house load could approach that. It should be capable of handling your main AC voltage, e.g. 230 volts. The key feature is its ability to automatically switch your home's power supply between the grid and your inverter when the grid goes down or comes back up. Look for models with a fast transfer time milliseconds to avoid noticeable power interruptions. Some hybrid inverters have a built-in ATS feature which simplifies wiring, but an external ATS offers more robust control and often higher current ratings. String sizing. Time for a bit of math, but don't worry, it's easy. This is crucial for efficient power generation. String sizing. Our goal is to connect our 10 panels in a way that provides the optimal voltage and current for our 6 kW hybrid inverter's maximum power point tracking range. Each of our 600 watt panels will have specific voltage VMP and current IMP ratings, typically around 40 to 50 volts VMP. Let's assume a typical VMP of 45 volts per panel. Most 6 kW inverters have an MPPT voltage range, for example. 120 volts to 450 volts DC. Option 1. Two strings of 5 panels in series. A common and efficient way for 10 panels is to create two strings with 5 panels connected in series in each string. Voltage per string, 5 panels into 45 volts per panel equals 225 volts DC. This 225 volt falls perfectly within our assumed 120 to 450 volt MPPT range. The current of each string will be the imp of a single panel, e.g. 13 to 14 amps for a 600 watt panel. When these two strings are connected in parallel to the inverter, the current will add up while the voltage remains at 225 volts. This setup maximizes efficiency and allows the inverter's MPPT to work optimally. Always check your specific inverter's MPPT voltage range and maximum input current to confirm your string sizing is correct. Wiring connections String DC SPD, DC MCB, DC isolator and inverter Now for the hands-on part, the wiring Safety warning Always ensure all power sources are disconnected before working on any electrical system If you're unsure, consult a qualified electrician Panel string wiring First, connect your 10 solar panels As we discussed, you'll create two strings of 5 panels each Connect the positive of one panel to the negative of the next in series using the MC4 connectors. The last panel in the string will have an exposed positive and the first panel will have an exposed negative. These are your string's main output cables. To DC distribution board, run the positive and negative cables from each of your two strings into your DC distribution board. These cables should be appropriately sized, typically 6 mm squared or 10 mm squared solar PV cable. Inside the DC distribution board, inside the DC box, each string's positive and negative go directly into a dedicated DC MCB. From the output of each DC MCB, the cables will then connect to the input of the DC SPD. The SPD itself is connected to the earth ground bar. After the SPD, the positives of both strings are combined and the negatives are combined. These combined positive and negative lines then run through the main DC isolator switch. To invert our DC input, Finally, the output of the DC isolator switch connects directly to the DC PV input terminals on your hybrid inverter. Ensure correct polarity, positive to positive, negative to negative. AC distribution board connections along with AC isolator switch between grid and AC distribution board. Moving to the AC side where power flows from your inverter to your home and interacts with the grid. This is equally critical for safety and functionality. Inverter AC Output to AC Distribution Board Load Side The AC output from your hybrid inverter, typically labeled AC Out or Load, 
connects to the input of the main AC MCB for load within your home's AC distribution board. From the output of this MCB, power is distributed to your individual household circuit MCBs, lights, outlets, etc. Inverter AC input grid connection. Now for the grid connection, your main incoming grid supply from your utility meter will first connect to the input of your main AC isolator switch. From the output of this AC isolator, the cables, live neutral earth, then connect to the AC in or grid input terminals on your hybrid inverter. ACSPD connection. The ACSPD in your AC distribution board is connected in parallel to the main incoming AC lines, either from the grid or before the main load MCB depending on your setup, and also connected to the earth bar. This ensures protection for your entire AC system. This setup allows your inverter to use grid power to charge batteries or supplement solar when needed, and also to send excess solar back to the grid if you have net metering. Battery Bank Connection or Power Reservoir The Battery Bank Connecting this correctly is vital for backup power and system stability. Battery Configuration If Multiple Batteries If you have multiple 12 volt batteries to make a 48 volt bank, you'll connect them in series, positive to negative, until you reach 48 volts. If you have multiple 48 volt batteries, you'll connect them in parallel, positive to positive, negative to negative, to increase capacity, amp hours. To battery MCB fuse. From the main positive and negative terminals of your 48 volt battery bank, the cables run to your high current DC MCB or fuse. To inverter battery terminals. From the output of that battery MCB slash fuse, the cables connect directly to the battery input terminals on your hybrid inverter. Pay extreme attention to polarity here, positive to positive, often red or marked plus, and negative to negative, often black or marked minus. Incorrect polarity can cause serious damage. Use thick gauge cables, e.g. 50 mm squared or 70 mm squared, for your battery connections to minimize voltage drop and safely handle high currents. ATS connections for load side. Now the automatic transfer switch, making your power seamless during outages. ATS inputs. The ATS will have two main power inputs. One for your grid supply, often labeled normal or mains. And one for your inverter supply, often labeled standby or generator. The output from your main AC isolator switch, the one connected to your utility grid, connects to the grid input terminals on your ATS. The AC output from your hybrid inverter, which feeds your home's loads, connects to the inverter input terminals on your ATS. ATS output to load. The single output from the ATS, often labeled load or output, then connects to the main AC MCB in your AC distribution board that feeds your household loads. In this configuration, the ATS constantly monitors the grid. If grid power fails, it automatically switches your home's power supply from the grid to your inverter, which is powered by solar and batteries. When grid power returns, it switches back all without you having to lift a finger. Earthing grounding connections, AC side and DC side. Last but certainly not least and absolutely critical for safety. Earthing or grounding. This protects you and your system from electrical faults. DC side. Earthing. All metal frames of your solar panels must be bonded together and connected to a common earth wire. This wire then runs down to your DC distribution board where it connects to the earth bar. The metal enclosure of your DC distribution board itself must also be earthed. The DCSPD is also connected to this earth bar. The chassis body of your hybrid inverter must have a dedicated earth connection, which typically connects back to the main earthing system. AC side earthing. In your AC distribution board, ensure that the main earth wire from your household's main earthing electrode, ground rod, is connected to the earth bar within the board. All earthing wires from your home's circuits, the ACSPD, and the metal enclosure of the ACDB connect to this bar. The ATS unit chassis should also be properly earthed, connecting back to your main earthing system. Main earthing point. Ultimately, all these earth connections converge at a single well-established main earthing point, usually a ground rod driven deep into the earth. This provides a safe path for fault currents to dissipate preventing electric shock and damage to equipment. Never skip earthing, it's your primary safety net. And there you have it, a comprehensive breakdown of how to plan and connect your very own 6 kilowatt hybrid solar power system, complete with 10 powerful 600 watt panels 
and that essential automatic transfer switch. Building a system like this is a fantastic step towards energy independence and reducing your carbon footprint. It might seem like a lot, but by breaking it down step by step, it becomes totally manageable. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning a solar project or if you have any more questions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more DIY solar guides and energy insights. Stay charged, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.